Nancy, and today I'll be presenting on acquired savant syndrome. Savant syndrome was coined in 1887 by John Langdon Down after meeting a patient who could recite verbatim the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. On page 192 of Ramachandran's book, Phantoms of the Brain, Ramachandran writes, Savants are persons whose mental capacity or general intelligence is abysmally low, yet who have islands of astonishing talent. So I think when most people think of savants, they think of Dustin Hoffman's character in Rain Man. While his character can know exactly how many toothpicks have fallen on the ground, 246. You still need help with day-to-day -day tasks. There are five different categories for the skills that a savant can possess. The first one of these skills is music. They can play perfect pitch and play multiple instruments. The second one of these skills is in art, and that can be seen with exceptional talents in drawing, sculpting, and painting. The third one of these skills is calendar calculating, meaning that you can name a random date, say June 4th, 1992, and they can tell you without any hesitation at all that that date fell on a Thursday. The fourth skill is in mathematics, meaning that they can do instantaneous calculations. The fifth is mechanical or spatial skills, meaning that they can know the distance of something with insane accuracy or know a map really, really well. Ron Shonen and others suggest that before or after a savant is born, their brain is damaged, which leads to rewiring. Ramachandran also suggests that a person with savant syndrome has a specifically larger brain region than that of a person with normal intelligence. The angular gyrus, for example, is involved in mathematical calculations, meaning that a math savant probably has an enlarged left angular gyrus, and an art savant may have an enlarged right angular gyrus. Now we would like to shift the view over to acquired savant syndrome. Unlike congenital savant syndrome, acquired savant syndrome happens after disease or damage to the brain. There are many examples of this. For instance, there was a 10-year-old boy who was knocked in the head by a baseball bat who could later do quick calendar calculations. There have also been cases in which acquired savants had earlier been diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia. There have been instances, for example, such as a 68-year-old man who had no interest in art and after being diagnosed with frontotemporal dementia, he became an accomplished artist. The one acquired savant, however, that interests me the most, his name is Derek Amato. While horsing around with friends, he jumped into the shallow end of a pool and hit his head hard. He was hospitalized with a concussion. A few days later, he visited a musician friend and was drawn to his keyboard. Amato never had a lesson, but he sat down and began playing as if he'd been doing it for years. So the really interesting thing about acquired savant syndrome is that it's usually damaged to the left frontal temporal area. Because the left hemisphere is damaged, it gives the right hemisphere an opportunity to be more activated, which gives rise to those savant-like skills. Which begs the question, does this untapped potential exist within all of us? That's just what Professor Alan Snyder wanted to find out. We're going to put magnetic pulses into your head. They're safe, and we're going to do that for about 15 minutes. Using a revolutionary technology, Snyder asserts that he can artificially turn on anyone's hidden potential by temporarily turning off part of their brain. Our transcranial magnetic stimulating equipment has been able to allow us to have the same skills that savants have. And he found that the subjects performed better after having the transcranial magnetic stimulation. When he first tried to count the dots, Mike seemed hesitant. But after a dose of magnetic stimulation, his responses are more confident. 103. 110. 62. Okay, so before the transcranial magnetic stimulation, you got 2 out of 20. <laughs> which, is, which is very typical. Yeah. That's about what most people get. But in your case, quite astonishingly, after TMS, you got 8 out of 20, which is better than our average. So maybe there's a little Rain Man within all of us. I recommend using transcranial magnetic stimulation over diving in the shallow end of a pool, however. Sally, Dibs, Dibs, Sally. 4610-0192. How did you know my phone number? How'd you know that? You said read the telephone book last night. 